Swapping barrels on a Savage Rifle is actually pretty easy. You do need a couple of specialized tools though. First off, you're going to need a barrel vise and the appropriate bushings for your barrel. You're going to need a barrel nut wrench, and these are pretty cheap. And you'll need headspace gauges to make sure that headspace is correct when you actually get this all put together. And aside from that, you'll need just some basic tools that you'll probably have lying around your garage. You'll need a wrench to tighten the, uh, the barrel vise down. And if you have a torque wrench, it's going to be a nice way to uh, attach the barrel nut. But you can also use a mallet, and I'll show you that method here in a minute. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing this 308 barrel from this Savage Axis, and we're going to be replacing it with this 7mm 08 that came off a Stevens 200. This is the, uh, the outgoing budget rifle from Savage. For those of you that aren't familiar with the, uh, the build that we're doing here, you should probably subscribe to the Social Regressive so that you can see the new videos that come out. And if you like us on Facebook, there are some behind the scenes uh, little goodies for you. And then this playlist down here will have everything in it. Because what we're doing is we are taking a Savage Axis and we're turning this into a thousand yard competition rifle. We've already done a trigger job on this thing and now it's time to get the superior ballistics of 7mm 08. Our first step is to select the correct diameter and profile of our barrel bushings. So I've selected some here. Okay, this one we're definitely not going to use. This looks like it's for a bull barrel. Uh, this is very fat and it's straight. Okay, so this one right here you can see has some taper to it. So this is more like a, uh, a sporter weight barrel profile like we have here. But I've gone ahead and I've actually selected the correct one that's going to fit our barrel the best. Uh, we want a bushing that's going to fit pretty well back toward the action. We want to have all of our uh, torque centered right here around the, uh, the area of work here. We don't want to be grabbing out on the end of the barrel. So this one, it has a little bit of a taper to it, as it should. And it locks neatly into place right about there on the barrel. If you're concerned about the fit of your bushing, maybe it doesn't fit exactly, you can just wrap a piece of paper around your barrel, put it between the barrel and the bushing, and that should protect the finish on your barrel. Here I have the barrel installed inside the bushing. Make sure that you put the wrench on first. I don't know how many times I've done this where I get the barrel all tightened down and realize I didn't actually put the wrench on. So just let that hang. And now it's time to tighten down the barrel vise. Don't have a big breaker bar? No problem. Just make sure you're going the correct direction when you start. We are turning the nut onto the barrel that way, so it's going to be clockwise. Okay, so that's loose, and theoretically this action should be loose enough to come off. Now I think they put some kind of uh, material, maybe some epoxy or something, on the threads here. So it's always a little tricky to take this off the first time. Uh, so we'll just have to, oh, no, never mind, there it goes. That just turns right off. All right, this is really weird. When we turn the action off, we're seeing tons and tons of these little metal shavings, these little metal balls. And we can tell they're metal because they are actually sticking to this magnet here. and they are all over the threads of the of the uh, the barrel they're here inside the action I have no idea what this is but I'm guessing it's not really supposed to be there it doesn't look like anything's damaged though so I think we'll just clean this up and then go ahead and install that barrel Unless there's some revolutionary new technique of jamming your threads with metal filings, I'm guessing that this was a huge mistake. It took a while to clean this out. We had to clean the action, the nut, and the barrel. And finally, everything's nice and smooth. This thing's turning on nicely. Time to loosen up the vise and get this barrel out. Now that we have our cleaned up action, it's time to put the 7mm 08 barrel on. And first we need to put this and the wrench here on the now vacated barrel vise. 
Before you start screwing the action in place, make sure that you have your barrel nut pretty far forward on the threads and you have uh, your wrench hanging off the barrel. I don't know how many times I've done this where I forget to put the wrench on there and then I have to do all my work over again. So all you have to do is just start threading the action back on and once you've gone a few threads in open up your bolt and this is where we start putting in the headspace gauge. This is a go gauge and it's pretty much just a cartridge is what it's in. It, this is like a, a case. It has a rim just like a case and it has a shoulder and this is meant to be a headspace gauge for everything in the 308 family of cartridges. This will work on 308, uh, 7 millimeter 08 like this barrel, 260 Remington, 243 Winchester. And when you put this in, you just want to make sure that this rim actually does snap over the extractor on your bolt. So instead of just popping this directly into the chamber, I'm going to actually attach this to the bolt and run the bolt in. Close the bolt and then continue threading your action onto the barrel. And at some point, this is going to come to a stop. Okay, so that's it right there. You don't want to just crank this onto the barrel. That's going to create a little bit too tight a space. What you want is just fingertip tight. Now, once you have that, Take your barrel nut, thread it the other direction, and snug it up against the action. And this time, since I actually have the wrench in place, I'm just going to slowly turn that nut on. Okay, you can see that this action just turned on me while I was turning the nut and that has changed our dimensions. It looks like this one is just a little bit too loose a fit. Sometimes you can get away with just tightening the nut onto the action, but apparently this is not one of those times. So what I'm going to do is just back this off a few threads and put a little bit of Loctite on the threads, let that solidify, let it dry for a little while, and then we'll come back and try putting the nut on again. The Loctite should have dried by now in here, so now it's time to uh, turn this wrench and turn the barrel nut onto the action. And in the meantime, I did take the go gauge out. So let's make sure to put that back in. I'm going to put this back under the extractor. Got it. Okay, so that's under the extractor. Feed that into the chamber. All right, and this still closes down. Now it's time to turn the wrench, turn this nut on, and just for safety's sake, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little torque this way uh, to make sure that this doesn't break the nut or break the action loose and spin the action off as well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And now one thing that I can do. At this point, I can use a torque wrench, and although I haven't seen any um, actual technical specs from Savage about how much torque to put on this, I've read around that you know 35 pound-feet of torque is what you're after. Um, now, most of you guys probably won't have a torque wrench, so there's a uh, pretty quick way to do this. Just take a mallet and give this thing a wrap. Ta-da! Done. Give it a second one. And really, that should be on there good and tight. All right, next, we need to make sure that the headspace is correct. Everything should be good, but just to make sure that nothing walked out, I'm going to remove the go gauge, and I'm going to drop this back into its protective sleeve. And now we're going to do the no-go gauge. 
This one is a just a little bit longer. I think it's three thousandths longer. And the bolt should not close on this gauge. If it does, start over, do it again. Okay, so I finally got that under the extractor. Goes into the chamber. And this should not close. Nope. That is going nowhere. Perfect. So the headspace is correct. Put the no-go gauge back into this sleeve. And that's it. This thing is complete. And we can just pull this out of the vise.